this is Mr. Airsoft, and in today's video we will be demonstrating how to install a MOSFET into an AEP VZ61 Scorpion. Um, this video was requested by a viewer of mine because he wants to do the same thing, but I'm sure other people could also use this advice as well. So let's get started. So basically, the first thing that you want to do is take out all the old wiring that is in your Scorpion. So it's really quite simple, um, mainly you need to take the gearbox out, which this is my backup Scorpion or part Scorpion, so a lot of it's already been disassembled. The black wire has already been taken off. I'm pretty sure that, at least for most of them, the two that I've gotten, the black wire is always fed through a slot here so there's usually a bracket here as well I don't remember if this post is covered up by the bracket so if it is you'll have to take apart the gearbox so you can get that off but what you need to do is just desolder the wires and then just pull them right off as you can see the black one's already off take the red one off and then put that aside and what these wires go to is they have little um, tabs that take this out. They slide onto these golden posts here. So um, we're going to get rid of this tab uh, way of doing it uh, when we rewire this with a MOSFET. But anyways, that first bit of uh, taking the wires out is pretty easy. The, the second part of taking the wires out is a little bit more tricky. Um, mainly you have to remove um, the fuse which is in here and then there's also some wires that go to the fuse as well and I'll show you what it looks like with my uh, scorpion Alright, so here's my scorpion. As you can see, the fuse box is completely removed. I'll show you again the fuse box in the regular one. So there it is right there. I should mention that um, in order to take these wires out, you need to take off the screws here, here, and these two as well. So you're basically taking apart this um, electrical mechanism here. And I'll do this all on camera too so you can see what to do. I already took out two of the screws. So you can take that off, pull out, and these gold things will kind of fall everywhere, but um, that is okay. I will show you where to put them. So you need to take out all the, this is the um, trigger contact, part of the trigger contacts, and so is the other one. You need to remember where those go. It's kind of easy to figure out where to put them back again though because it's, it's, it's almost like a puzzle, but it's really clear where they go to. And these posts here and here, these go to where the old battery would plug into. Those would those touch the old battery terminals. So you take all this stuff out. And once you get the uh, these golden pieces of the wires out of the way, you can pull this out here. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do this. So there's your trigger mechanism. Alright, so I got the fuse box and these wires out, and there does turn out to be a screw that holds it in place, however it's impossible to reach because it's you'd have to have a screw, screwdriver going in the side of the pistol grip to, to, to unscrew it. So I don't really know how that how that's expected to work, unless you have a, a screwdriver, Phillips head that's shaped like an L, then it probably is possible, but I don't have one of those, and honestly it, it doesn't really... It's not really worth it to worry about that because you're not going to need this anymore. So, 
Um, take this out, you don't need it. You will need um, these two golden posts. You need to desolder these and take them off. You, honestly, you could probably take this out, uh, this out too, as it's just a screw that holds the little bracket and screw that holds it in. Alright guys, so once you have all the wires taken out, um, and I, I should mention at this point that this only applies for if you're using the Perrin just basic MOSFET, that the tiny one, the, the micro MOSFET. Um, if you're not, then I don't really know, because I've only done this once and it was just the Perrin MOSFET. But I will show a scheme, that they, a diagram scheme that they have in a second here of their wiring suggestion, which is what I followed. What you have to make sure you do is cut, you have to measure, just do a rough measurement of what wire lengths you need, and you have to do that by um, positioning the MOSFET inside the pistol grip, running the wires up, all the wires up through here into the, uh, make a pathway into the gearbox where it sits here and would connect to the motor, and then after that you know how much to cut off. Um, those are the main wires. The signal wires, which are the little small ones, are a little bit different, which I'll get to in a second here. So I'll show the diagram now. So now that you've seen the diagram, I'll show you how I did it. Basically, um, first thing that I did was I cut a hole, uh, I can't remember if it was in both of these, I believe it was. I used a Dremel to cut a hole through here. Alright, so I cut a hole probably around right here. Use this to point it up at it, right, right in this area. You don't want to cut through this part because you're going to have one of your posts sticking up there. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so once you've done that, you need this part of the trigger contacts in here. And you need this part of the trigger contacts in here. You need both of those. Those are the only parts you need. In the diagram, I have one signal wire that goes directly from the MOSFET to the uh, trigger. So, that one you want to cut to the right size and solder to this little post here. And you solder it to that one. And there's another signal wire. And with that one, once you've once you've gotten this part drilled out and you've fed your MOSFET wires through there, you have to cut a little snippet, probably about an inch long of signal wire. You solder it to this post, and then you have to splice the red MOSFET wire. And it says this in the instructions. You have to splice that wire and solder the signal wire into that while you know while they're all kicking. So it's like a it's kind of like a a T intersection, that's what you could call it, I guess, for lack of better terms. Basically, you, you solder that into that, so it's 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 a, the other si signal wire is what it is. Um, so, and when you when you feed the main wires through that hole, you have to have this plate in there as well. You have to feed it through this plate. It's, it's a lot of finesse, and you have to use common sense and make sure you do it in the right order, because if you don't, then you're just going to mess up somehow. So, let me go over it again. You have to drill a hole. You have to drill the hole on this side, preferably, like, right where that slot right where the slot on the right is, not the left slot, the right slot. Drill it right through the right slot, big enough to fit those two main wires of the MOSFET through. And then this is kind of going to be hanging loose when you're doing this, but you feed all that through there after you've cut measured everything, obviously. Um, or measure, <laughs> measured and cut everything. Um, So 
So yeah, you have that. You solder the signal wire to this right here, that's the easy one. Get this flipped right. And then you have to solder a little patch of signal wire from here, and then you splice that into the red wire, not the black wire, the, the red wire. And then cover that up with electrical taper. If you have, if you if you put the heat shrink on before you uh, solder it in, you can try that too. Um, so once you've done that, um, and it, once again, it takes a lot of finesse and a lot of patience because after that, you got to fit this back in there. And I'm not even going to try to do that right now because. Uh, well, what do you know? I got it first try. That's so rare. It is such a pain to get this in. Um, so yeah, once you once you've done that and you have moss wires and everything sticking up through here, you have your thing soldered in there. Got your trigger contacts in. Uh, you can put this back on the pistol grip, but what you need to do is solder the black and the red. You have to make sure you know which side is positive and which one is negative. I, most of these motors have red marked on the positive side, but you need to just solder the, your wires right onto these posts here, but you need to be careful because these posts are really weak and they snapped off for me, so I had to do some finessing to, to get that to work right. Um, if you guys have any issues with that, let me know because I definitely did. Um, it's a lot more fragile now. so. Once you solder your main black and your main red to the, the motor, um, you should be good to go. You just need to have a, a, a either a really, really small 7.4 volt light bulb that fits in here, which is what I use sometimes. But then you could also like make an extension cord of sorts and use an 11.1 and just have it in your backpack or your bag or whatever, what, what have you, with you in the game. The problem with using 11.1 volt is that even though your trigger contacts will handle it because you have a MOSFET, your gearbox is going to take a lot more strain. That's one of the main reasons I only use a 7.4 volt light bulb because uh, I don't want to ruin any gearbox components because they're pretty rare and hard to get. So, sadly, they don't really make much performance parts for these. Um, but yeah, I'll go over the process one more time for you guys. First thing you want to do is take your gearbox out, take the red and black wires off, um, take your trigger contacts out, the, the mechanism here, and uh, just remember that you have to get all these little gold, gold pieces off and um, desolder those, but first you need to obviously just, so what I did for this, I'll just go over that again, is I just stuck a screwdriver behind it and I just pried it out, it just snapped off, the plastic did. Um, so after you do that you can, I guess technically you don't even need these things, so you don't have to take them off. Um, so do that, and then start the rewiring process, which when you start, you want to measure how much wire you need, and then cut it off, cut off the extra. Um, and this is, this, I should mention, this is all for the pre-wired. If you're using uh, the, just the one that comes on its own, then honestly, I don't really know how you do that. I don't remember if they give you a bunch of wire to use. I suppose that you could kind of go through the same process, it might even be easier, but I just like the pre-wired because it's already got the MOSFET soldered in and everything. Um, but yeah, so, drill a hole through this plate. On the right, the right hole, not the left hole. Um, work the wires up 
like the main wires, just the two the two main wires up through there. Um, put the signal wire on the this little this little one right here. The the signal wire that I should mention this the signal wire that goes from the MOSFET. Put that one on there. And then the one that you have to splice in it. You need to um, use the other side of the trigger contacts, which is this long one. And You splice the white, the red wire. Um, take a little, little strip of the uh, signal wire, solder it. Oh, I should mention that too. Actually, you're gonna have to when you when you do this, you need to have when you solder that signal wire on, you have to have this plate down because it's, you're not gonna be able to put it down once it's soldered on. So you have to have this plate down. To solder that little signal wire on. So once you have this down, you can solder it onto your uh, spliced red wire and then close that up. And then put this back in. After that, you can put the main wires on the motor and then you're good to go. One major thing I do want to add is that regarding your two, these are these. This is my uh, finished one with the MOSFET in. You have to feed those two wires up on the sides here. And what really sucks is that since they're so thick, this thing gets in the way. It's too tight, and you're gonna kill you. Not kill, but you're gonna ruin your wires if you, you're going to ruin your wires if you um, try to just slide this on regularly. So this is an issue that I think is probably inevitable that all people will have to do if they, if they try to do this, but I ended up having to dremel out the sides of this to make it thinner so that it would slide down without scraping up these wires and ruining them. So. That is something I will sure I'm sure you'll have to do, and if you don't, you're lucky. It sounds complicated, and I'm really sorry if this video is doesn't do a very good job explaining the process. Uh, I haven't made any videos in a while. I've been really busy working, and I got a boat this summer, so I've been and the the motor is pretty old, so I've been repairing that a lot. I've been really busy, but I, I do want to thank the, the viewer that requested this video. It's like gave me something to add, like to put on this channel because I haven't done anything in a while. So, anyways, I hope this works out for you, man. Um, I'm really, really sorry if this is a video does not do a good job explaining it. I have a lot of editing to do because I was all over the place with this video. So. I'll try to make it more coherent. Um, anyways, before I keep on digging a little hole for myself, a little grave for myself here, I'll, I'll finish this off. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Hopefully, I my schedule clears up so I can do more videos.